some interferences with people uh, talking in your in your frequency. Then again, uh, durability um, is also a, a key. Usually, in home systems are way more resistant, way more uh, professional, way more uh, constructed in way more uh, resistant material. And finally. Uh, encrypted communications, which means that professional wireless intercom systems usually come with some sort of encryption so that nobody can tune in your frequency and listen to what you are talking about. This is why uh, professional intercom systems are really good for, for security applications, for example, because nobody can tune in and listen to what you are talking in your uh, security team, for example. Okay. Uh, something really important too is that intercom systems can be used in very loud environments. Why did I place an asterisk here? Well, I placed it here because of course you can use uh, intercom systems in noisy environments if you choose the right model of headset. Okay, There are many types of headsets. There are, there are closed ones, more open ones, which do not uh, insulate that much. Uh, which do not isolate you that much from the uh, noise in the environment. But if you select the proper model headset, then you will be able to work in very loud environments, which is also a huge difference uh, when compared to walkie-talkies in which you basically cannot talk through them when the, when the, when the ambience is real loud. Okay? So, I would say that this is one of the most important things for today, uh, talking about the events industry and entertainment world, um, being able to, to use the systems in noisy environments is crucial. Okay. So again, intercom versus walkies. Basically, uh, I wanted to, to explain with this idea that this is a Ford Fiesta. This is a Ford Fiesta rally and the street version. Basically, intercom and walkies are like this. They do exactly the same things. They are same type of device. They, they both um, pose a, a combination option. But of course, you would never run a rally with a street for Fiesta, and you probably wouldn't go driving down the street um, to do groceries with a rally car. So with intercom and walkie-talkies, is the same. Uh, both intercom and walkie-talkies are valid options. They are both useful in their own uh, specific tasks, but uh, you should always mm, try to know them. Uh, you should always know them and know in which applications uh, intercom is good and walkie-talkies are good, just to, to select what you are going to use for a specific application. So both are valid communication devices, and uh, you should just know that some of them are better and more reliable and some of them are just limited to certain and not that not so relevant tasks such as walkie talkies for example so th this is the idea know your tools okay know your tools and know what you use them for. both consistent and walkie talkies are useful tools that an engineer must know okay they can work together even you can connect them so basically alter systems can be connected to some walkie talkies brands using one of our interfaces and it's important to know their advantages for example walk talk is big advantage it's cheap a uh, big disadvantage you can uh, have some uh, interference use uh, problems you cannot use it in load environments so it's just a matter of knowing both tools and deciding what's better for each specific application that's the idea uh, and walkie talkies can sometimes be a really good backup for an intercom system Okay, so we will be talking about this later, but remember that walkie-talkies can be a good backup for an intercom system. Mostly, uh, again, go back and talking about what a professional intercom system is. Uh, basically, in the end, the big difference is reliability. When you purchase uh, and when you trust uh, a brand, a, a professional intercom brand with your money, actually what you're paying is reliability. You are paying to not have problems, okay? So basically, intercom systems solve a lot of problems which are present when using walkie-talkies and which are present when using a professional intercom. So in the end, it's all um, about reliability. So I did this simple, this simple drawing uh, with three axes just to illustrate this um, walkie-talkies and intercom coexistence, okay? So basically, uh, in this axis, we would have the frequency of the communication, uh, which means 
how much do you use the communication channel, how much do you need to talk, and you know, basically how much time the, the communication channel is occupied. Then time and precision from minus to plus, which means that how important is that all the events that are being discussed over the communication line, uh, how, how accurate must they be? Okay, uh, and so for example, if I'm talking to through my intercom system, uh, and I tell some actor that he has to go on stage at a theater, that must happen immediately when I say it. Okay, so in this case, that would be here. That would be a plus. Very important that that event takes place exactly at the right at the right time. And then here in this axis, we have, we have envir environment noise. Okay, so from very no very noisy to almost not noisy. So these have values, okay, this is just a, an abstract image. But here in this purple area, we could find some applications in which walkie-talkies would be good. So um, a communication need, which um, is not that necessary. I mean, when, for example, we are going to use a communication device just to talk sometimes to say something to, to a colleague, uh, but the communication is not that frequent. Uh, and the timing precision is not that, that important and the environment noise is not that loud, you could be using perfectly a walkie-talkie. Here, a zookeeper, okay? The zookeeper must do some tasks every day, but the timing precision is not that high. He has to go and feed the animals, and he has to go and clean some cages. But, you know, the, time is, the timing is not that accurate. He can do that over the day, okay? The environment noise is very, very quiet, okay? Because he's go, working... In, in open in open field in open air open space and frequency of the communications is not that that high they are just talking to each other from time to time uh, on the opposite uh, side we have our, the production manager of an electronic music festival you know timing is crucial okay so it's really high uh, environmental noise is also really high and the frequency of communications is really high so basically that's the idea that walkie talkies and intercom systems can coexist and actually they do well going to the types of intercom system okay this could take hours so i'm going to make it really quick really simple and i'm not going to to get into into details basically uh, we are going to be talking today about a party line system a okay? party line systems are systems in which we have a, a bunch of um, colleagues a bunch of professionals in the same team in the same channel and they all listen to and talk to each other, okay? That in, in comparison to a matrix system, which is something way more flexible, which is usually used for fixed installation, which uh, allows to, um, to make uh, private calls and different applications and different functions. But in this case today, we're going to be talking about party line systems, okay? And also IP-based, this is based on Ethernet versus analog. Today we are going to be talking about analog. But just with this, with this simple image, I want you to know that there are several types of intercom systems and you should uh, get to know them and study a little bit what you need before purchasing anything, okay? And there are systems which are more suitable for fixed applications and there are other systems which are better for live events. Today, we are going to be focusing ourselves on live events and we are going to be focusing on products, products which are good for live events, okay? So, for example, um, a device, an IP-based device. This is some, uh, some example of a device that we would use in a system. But again, this is not the case today. Okay. Today, we are going to talk about this. We are going to be talking about wireless intercoms. This is a wireless base station. Here you see the, the antennas. Uh, and we are also going to be talking about wire cable-based intercom systems. Okay, this is the base station, and this would be the personal belt pack that the user would have uh, attached to his belt uh, to communicate. Okay, usually, usually we have a headset connected to the belt pack, and in the base station we have a user who will be using another head connected here, or as a, a gooseneck microphone with a speaker. If this, if his model of base station uh, includes these these functions. Uh, okay, so. To, to explain the, the matrix concept that we were talking about before, uh, basically, so that you understand what is it, although I insist we are not going to be talking about this today, basically, a matrix, matrix concept 
it works this way. Uh, we have um, we have columns and we have rows and we have here four users who are Red Mike, Peter, and Mary. We have four four communication channels: production, audio, lights, and management. So in this case, in this image, we have said that Mary is going to be part of the management uh, channel. Peter is going to be a part of the production channel and Mike is going to be part of the audio channel and Rachel is going to be part of the lights channel okay but the good thing about the metrics is that it's very flexible and it offers you to allocate um, several users in several channels for example this is just a very simple example of uh, the capabilities that a matrix offers for example in this case HP in both production and lights channels and Peter would be in both production and management channels okay but forget about this because we are not going to be talking about that much today. We are going to be talking about party line, as I said, party line. And then to explain, first of all, the concept of party line, okay? Uh, you know, the concept comes, the name comes from back in the days, uh, I, I was in the late 80s or something like that, when uh, you could call a telephone number and you would be talking to, to a lot of people normally just to have fun. Okay, like 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 chat, like to chat. Okay, so that's the idea. That's the idea. The concept of party line. Uh, this would be a table based example is the following. We have a base station. Okay, this would be the base station, which is like the core of the system, and it also includes the power supply for all the system. Okay, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven users, all of them with their belts connected via cable. So in this case, in a party line system, in an intercom system based on party line concept, all these users would be talking to each other. So this user can talk to this one, this user can talk to this one, but anytime any of them some, says something, all of them are going to listen to what he's saying, okay? So uh, the, the privacy in party line mode is not a, um, the, the strong point, okay? It's more a system of working which is based on collaboration of the different uh, workers in the same team, okay? And here we have a dual channel, A and B, party line. Those are the members, okay? and these are mem the members of channel A, okay? They can communicate uh, with each other, but they cannot communicate with B and B, a users can communicate between them, but they cannot communicate with the A team. Okay, uh, I'm going to just skip this because it's complicated and we do not have, we do not have time for that. So, uh, big question: Why do I need an intercom system? This is a crucial question. Well, first of all, um, intercom systems provide safety, okay, uh, which is crucial for events with pyrotechnics also uh, they are very important if something bad happens for evacuation they just make evacuation way easier they are good for the mounting and disassembly period in which we are trying with electrical we are doing some tests with lights we have people who are going under this over the stage climbing up uh, trusses so uh, it's really accurate communication between all the members really helps prevent uh, accidents. So for safety, it's an important reason why to have an intercom system. Second, and what I believe is the most important, basically an intercom system multiplies your options, you know, exponentially. It just makes possible mm, to, to do some sort of events which wouldn't be possible without an intercom system. Okay, and, and now we will see an example of that. Uh, efficiency. Money and time. Intercom systems make your workflow way faster and way more accurate, and that in the end saves you money and time. And I'm going to explain this with an example. Here you see an image of a movie uh, called the Good, the Bad, and the Ugly. Um, it, this was shot actually in Spain in by the end of the 50s or the early 1960s. So here you see this scene in which a bridge is blown up. Okay. What happened in this movie is that actually they had to blow up the bridge twice. This bridge was built specifically for the movie. So uh, in the first time they, they blew it up, they were not recording due to a mistake uh, in the communication. They didn't have intercom systems by the time and they were just using like a white t-shirt uh, and when lowering it down, uh, a, a member of the crew should explode, the, the, should detonate 
the, the bridge. But of course, uh, cameras should be on, but they weren't due, again, as I am explaining, to um, a bad communication. Of course, that wouldn't, that wouldn't have happened with an intercom system. And in the end, in this story, what happened is that they had to rebuild the, the bridge again, and they, they, then they got they get to, um, to shot the, the scene uh, properly. But it's a good example of why you need an intercom system to maximize your money and to save time. In this case, they wasted millions uh, in money and tons of times, so like uh, three or four weeks in time. Uh, and talking about what I was mentioning before about how intercom systems make possible some events which are just not possible without them. This is, for example, the opening ceremony of the Olympics. I believe this is London, I, but I don't remember the year. But basically, the idea that I want to transmit is that this kind of event, it's impossible to, to conduct with our intercom system. Probably in this event, you have over, let's say, 20 stage managers, managers, maybe over 300 professionals. You have code management, you have lighting, you have fire techniques, you have security, you have lights. No, you, you not only uh, have an intercom system, but you have like maybe 20 channels of different teams, different communication channels for this intercom system. So of course, this is plain and simply impossible to conduct without an intercom system. So if you are conducting big events, if you are, go, if you are aiming high, you need an intercom system for sure. Okay. Uh, again, uh, going back to the example that I used for a stage manager in classic theater, uh, this would be something related to this image that we have just seen. Okay. So here, time is very accurate. That's why it's here. And again, um, the, the frequency of the communication is high. And that's why this would be an um, intercom usage area and not walkie-talkie, which is purple, okay? So uh, we are going to talk about typical uses in the event industry. You probably already know this, but just uh, as a reminder, uh, production crews at music festivals or corporate events or at the theater or at circus, um, then sound, light, and machinery crews, live video production, and security. This would be, um, as, as far as I as far as I can recall, I would say this is the, the main, you know, this summarizes pretty well the, the main applications of intercom systems in the event industry, okay? Production crews, online machinery crews, live video production and security. More or less, that would be it, okay? And now we're going to see uh, entire wired intercom devices, okay? Basically, as I explained before, we are going to be talking always about party line concepts, okay? In this case, we see a base station, which is four channels, which means that it can create four separate party lines, four separate communication groups, okay? From A, we could take a line of up to, let's say, six, 10 belt packs. From B, the same, we could take a line uh, of uh, up to five, six belt packs again, then C, and then D. So you can, we can create four separate channels, four separate lines, four separate communication channels. This system, this wired intercom system, is based on XLR cable, okay. um, two wires plus shield, classic XLR cable that we use in the audio industry. This would be uh, the belt pack. This is the example of the personal belt pack that a user would have attached to his belt. Again, as I explained before, when using a wire-based intercom system, and this is the headset, okay? These are the, 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 the three main devices when setting up a cable-based intercom system. So uh, before going ahead, I'm going to talk about um, just a few controls which are key for our systems, okay? Um, basically our systems, our third systems are based on a talk key, a listen key, a listen level, microphone key, which is a function that lets the, the stage manager or the, um, let's, let, let's call it the organizer of the intercom system. Um, this allows uh, switching off all the microphones. The call button, which uh, is that you that what you use when you want to to let your colleagues that you are calling and that you want to communicate, then the buzzer key, which activates, it turns on and off the um, the, the acoustic um, call in your device, no matter if it's a belt pack or a base station, 
and then the buzzer kill works uh, in a way which is similar to the microphone kill. You know, the, the, the stage manager or the organizer of the intercom system can decide when all the bus, buzzers are going to be remotely uh, switched off. So we're, we're going to, um, to keep on explaining um, from the most simple to the most advanced some examples of wired or cable-based intercom system. In this case, we would have a inter an intercom system for three users, cable-based. So basically, this would be the power supply. This red line would be XLR cable from the power supply to this bell pack, from this bell pack to the next one, and from this bell pack to the next one, and so on. So basically, with this simple configuration, we can create a line of, let's say, from one to 15 uh, users. This is the more, the most affordable way to, config, to, to set up a cable-based intercom system with a third product. Okay? It's affordable, it's reliable, these products are built to last, and it poses a great option and a great tool to have for any company working in the, in the events world. Okay? If you don't have enough money to go wireless, then the cable-based devices uh, are a great option for you. Making things a little bit more complicated, we have the same, but two channels, okay? These are two party lines, channel A, which is one party line, and channel B, which is another party line, okay? In this case, uh, this is the power supply. This cannot be used as a communication point, and users in channel B cannot talk to users in channel A, okay? So we are going to advance to something a little bit more complicated. This is the power supply we have just been talking about, and and go into the more complicated, we are going to change from this power supply to this base station. This is now a proper base station in which you can uh, plug, in which you can plug a headset so that you can use it as a communication point. As we see here, control panel of this base station, this user, the user which is located at the base station, can call channel A and he can call channel B. That means that he can talk to channel A and channel B. Okay, that's, a, that's an advantage of being here at the base station. You can talk to both channels. Um, on the contrary, if you are uh, plugged uh, with a bell pack via XR cable to channel A, you will only be able to communicate to the users in channel A and to the user at the base station. Okay, but the user at the station, again, he can talk to both channels A and B. Okay. So here we have the example. We have this base station. Uh, here I haven't pictured, I haven't drawn the, the headset, but imagine that we have a headset connected here to the base station, and the operator can talk to channel A or to channel B. But the users in channel B can only talk between them and with the station and so on with the users in channel A. Okay. This is this, the same example, but here uh, you can see that I have drawn the headset uh, for the operator at the base station. This user at the base station can talk to all users in channel A, he can talk to all users in channel B, okay? But the users in A can only talk to A, and the users in B can only talk to B. Uh, this would be an example, for example, uh, of a party line system. Okay, this is a party line system again, but in this case, we have a mix of the, we have belt packs and headset, and we have a remote station or desk, desk, desktop station or whichever you want to call it. Basically, it's the same example, just a party line, one channel with several users and different devices. Now, a uh, I wanted to, to show you a couple good tools for you if you are working in noisy environments, okay? For noisy environments, when you have your belt pack attached to the, to the belt, sometimes you don't perceive, you don't hear the, the, the call, you don't hear the buzzer when being called. And that's why we have this device, which is a belt pack, a cable-based belt pack, but it comes with this big beacon, and when somebody's calling you, and you see this orange flashlight flashing in your face, and that lets you know um, that you are being called and then you grab your headset and start communicating. Also for noisy environments, we have this specific model of headset, uh, which is more isolating, okay? This uh, is better to, to insulate yourself from, from the um, uh, noise of the environment. So, um, 
I, I wanted to highlight that accessories in this case, accessories can improve or worsen your user experience drastically. For example, you buy a really expensive intercom system to work in live concerts and to communicate with your video, lights, sound guys, production guys, and suddenly you get to the place and the noise is so loud that you cannot see well, and that's because you did not you did not choose properly the model of headset um, from the first moment. So it's interesting that when you request information or, or when you order an intercom system, it's important that you um, consult or, or that you ask about the, the available headsets that, that they, which are compatible for your intercom system. Okay? That's a good advice that you should take. And, and now we are going to jump to wireless. Okay? We have just briefly explained uh, cable-based systems. We have talked about two-channel stations uh, for cable-based systems, but take into consideration that there are also uh, base stations with up to four channels, okay, in case you need to have more separate teams, okay? So basically, wireless intercom systems, starting with the most easy, starting with the basic. Imagine that we only have a system uh, consisting of two users, two wireless users. In this case, and just in this case, it would be enough with two bell packs. If we buy two bell packs of what we call the extreme series, these are our most advanced bell packs, when using two of these um, bell packs, we can set up a two wireless user system, okay? But I insist, only, uh, this is the only setup that does not require a wireless base station. From now on, on, okay, we will see that we will be talking about a uh, base station which will be always the center or, or the nu nucleus or whatever you want to call it of the system. Um, before that, just very fast, okay, we have in our catalog, a third catalog only has four different models of bell packs. And basically, the most used ones are this single channel, Extreme Series, and this single channel, Compact Series, okay? We also have dual channel bell packs, and later we'll see what they do, uh, what, what, which are the advantages of using dual channel bell packs, but 90% of the cases, you will be using single channel bell packs. But again, we will see it later. So, WBS 200 HD, this is going to be, of an entire wireless system anytime that we want to have up to four wireless users. Over four, five, over four wireless users, so from five to um, any, uh, we will be using another model of base station, but we will talk about that later. So basically we have a, the, this, the simplest example, which is one base station, which again is the center or the core of the system. We have one user connected to this station with his headset. This person cannot move as he is connected to the base station and the base station is not um, designed to be mobile. It's just placed uh, in one position and it's fixed. fixed. And then we have uh, this wireless user. So this would be a one wireless user and one fixed user. Um, this would be the simplest, okay? Then moving on. We have the same example, but in, instead of having just one wireless user, we have four wireless users and one user at the station. All the wireless users should be in the range area to be communicating to the base station, which again is the core of the system. Now, later we will be talking about, about range. Uh, and this, was, this would be an example of uh, how you can order your system. This would be a great tool, this is just the perfect tool for you if you are working uh, on events. You have just four wireless bell packs, you have five headsets which will would fit in the box. And you just take this on the road. Whenever you want to, to use it, you just open it, plug it, press play, press on, switch it, switch it on, working. Good to go. Okay, this would be, uh, I insist, a great option for you working on events. Then, if we want to use more than four wireless bell packs we should jump and go to the next model of base station okay this is wbs 202 hd what's the difference in this case we have two channels channel a and channel b so this station lets the operator at the station make calls to channel a or to channel b 
and he can talk and listen to channel A and B simultaneously. It's more or less the same um, that we saw when we were talking about the, the cable-based stations. But in this case, there are no cables, it's just um, wireless, okay? But also, also this station is compatible to cable. So later we will see some uh, examples uh, on how to combine wireless devices and cable devices. So here, for example, the, the, um, the, the, the complete set, okay? The complete set of eight wireless belt packs using this station as the center of the core. Here you see the WBS202 HD station with its two pole buttons, channel A and channel B. And here we see that we have uh, all the four, all the eight uh, belt packs, okay? All the eight wireless belt packs. Also, this station features some really interesting um, possibility, which is uh, that it can create two teams, channel A and channel B, okay? This would be the call button for channel A, and this would be the call button for channel B, okay? So we can have it like this, channel A, separate team, channel B, separate team, but in wireless, okay? So all the members in channel B can talk between them and with this user at the station, and all the members in channel A can talk between them and with the user at the station. We can use it this way with separate channels or we can use it this way, okay? The, the base station offers you the possibility of choosing if you want to have all the eight wireless users plus the user at the station in the same channel. So in this case, we will have nine users talking in the same communication channel, okay? It's important that you know that the, the, the base station has both options. And why did I place this cable belt pack here? Well, because I haven't been talking much about dual channel belt packs, and I want you to know that there are dual channel belt packs both in wireless and wired versions, okay? So in case that you need a user um, with a belt pack, no matter, no matter if it's wireless or cable based if you need him to be able to communicate with two channels we have that covered you can use it okay so for example let's say that you have a stage manager and he needs to be talking to audio guys and lighting guys so he can do it with a uh, dual channel belt pack okay so going back to the to the example of the eight wireless belt packs and the dual channel wireless station we have this example. This is a real life example with a combination of different models of belt packs. And we have channel A with four users, channel B with four wireless users. But in this case, we are using the, the maximum of the capabilities of the system and we have included two dual channel belt packs. So this user would be dual channel and this user would be dual channel. So this means that this person, this member of channel B, can talk to all members in channel B, but also he can communicate with channel A. And it happens the same to this user. He is part of channel A, but he can also talk to channel B. Okay, That's the advantage of using a dual channel belt packs. And talking about dual channel belt packs in cable-based systems, here you see a combination of a wireless station but as I, as I advanced before, uh, it accepts or it can work with cable-based device. So in this case, we have this wireless station we, that has, let's say, uh, four and four wireless belt packs in channel A and channel B respectively. But at the same time, it has three belt packs connected to channel A and three connected to channel B. Being one of them, a dual channel belt pack, which is connected to channel A and B at the same, okay? I know that, I know that this is a little bit complex. I know that this is um, maybe too much for just a session, but I wanted to, to give you um, a lot of tools and a lot of knowledge in not much time, and it's complicated sometimes. So we are going to move on, and we are going to talk about the range, okay? So how big is the area that our intercom systems can cover, okay? So before going on with this, I, wa I want to say that sometimes, uh, actually a lot of times, walkie-talkies, they have a bigger range, okay, than intercom systems, but they have, um, they have this advantage, but they have some disadvantages that we have been talking about before, 
okay? So usually walkie-talkies have a bigger range and intercom systems have a more limited range, but in, the, let's say, the, the smaller range that the intercom system uh, has, um, it offers way more powerful tools than the walkie-talkie system, okay? So how, my, how big is our range, okay? How big is the range of an alter wireless intercom? So basically, placing the base station in the middle, okay, we can cover a radius of up to 300 meters, okay? This is an open field situation, okay? Like an uh, ideal situation. 300 meters radius, which means that we can have two users which are separated between them with a 600 meters straight line, okay? This would be the diameter, okay? So let's say that it can cover a 600 meters diameter with the base station in the middle. This is the range. And again, I insist this is in ideal conditions. Of course, if you are working inside a building with several walls and um, that complicate things and you should always try and, and see how the system uh, works. But keeping in mind that we have a special antennas that you can place to improve, to improve range. So there are always tools to, to improve the, um, the performance of your system, talking about range. But basically, this is the thing, up to 600 meters range. Uh, about the audio quality, well, here you see, this is, uh, mm, this is the, the wide band, Let, mm, let's talk about it like this. This is the, the, the audio band that our previous system, that our old system featured. So before our systems went from 300 hertz to 3 kilohertz, okay, which right now, nowadays it sounds a little bit uh, narrow, but we have recently doubled the quality and the audio quality of our devices goes now from 100 hertz to 7 kilohertz. That makes uh, the voice sound way more natural. It has more body, it has a way more low, low end, and of course it goes way, way higher, which gives this, um, this nice, and bright and um, um, shine to the voice. So in the end, if you are working eight hours with the intercom system, it's really nice. And the, the, the comparison between both systems is, is really huge. So we are going to talk now about some combinations of mixed uh, wired and wireless solutions. So in this case, although before I showed an example, here we have an example of four wireless the, uh, belt packs, okay? These are four wireless devices. And we have in the same team, in the same party line, in the same party line, we have three cable-based belt packs, okay? This is a complicated, a really complicated example that we are not going to explain. This is just to show that we can work also in TV sets with a mixed solution of a four channels cable system. And then we have a couple users who are going to be wireless. And even we can create a communication line with the with the TV hosts uh, on the TV set. Uh, this is a very classic example that it's good that you know this. For example, uh, as this is a, a theater. Okay, drawing is based on a theater on a real life example. But uh, we, we could be talking about um, music festival. This could be FOH and it could be the stage. Usually, in this case, um, the most interesting thing is to place the base station on top of the of the stage because usually this is the area in which the wireless users are going to be operating and then we just send a line of XLR cable to the FOH and here we placed a um, cable based bell pack uh, or a vision or whichever device um, that we consider. So this is a, a, a good example of how to combine wireless devices, cable based devices to, to maximize range. You know? In this case, if we had any kind of problem with range, this is solved because we have um, a cable-based device. But anyway, this is more talking about a, a fixed installation uh, and just to save money. Not that, the, not that the range here would be a problem at all because this, um, this example is pretty small. So here the range wouldn't be a problem at all and this user could also be wireless. Um, talking about this, why is also interesting to combine cable and wireless because cable is way more cheap than wireless so it's good to have wireless and cable based belt packs and use a combi combination of them because cable based is way cheaper than wireless again 
another example that we are seeing here on the screen, just with a wireless, wireless base station with wireless users, and then a couple of um, desk, desktop stations uh, connected to the wireless station cable. So what do I want to explain with this? I just want to explain that you can combine our devices, our wireless devices and our cable-based devices, whichever way that fits your installation or your needs. It just is, it's just a matter of asking a modern stage crew or ourselves, we can help you to find the, the best solution for your needs. Again, these are uh, weird, uh, uncomplicated examples, but I just wanted to show you with this example, this two cable-based uh, stations, which are four channels. Okay, In this case, we, we would be having here in this core uh, a system of up to eight cable-based channels. Okay? Then as you connected to, to different devices, to different lines of cable belt packs, to different desktop uh, stations. And here in this case, in this channel B of this uh, EF204 station, from this channel B, we would be connecting to a desktop station, but also to a line of four wireless belt packs. Okay, so as you see, we can achieve pretty complicated um, solutions with our systems. Again, more complicated solutions. I'm just not, not even going to, to stop in this one. And we're going to, to head into the final recommendations, okay? Um, these are not complicated, but just a couple of things that I that I consider you should um, keep in mind. So, brands compatibility. Sometimes it happens that you are working uh, in a company and you have a couple pieces of uh, belt packs from one brand, and then you um, you buy another couple of pieces of another belt pack uh, from a different brand, and you want to know if they are compatible. Okay, so. Wireless belt packs, wireless intercom systems are not compatible between them. Uh, each brand uses its own proprietary protocol and they are not compatible. So just forget about that. But cable, cable belt packs, cable belt, cable based belt packs, uh, usually all the, the professional brands uh, that manufacture intercom systems, um, let's say that they follow a standardized protocol. And for example, if you want to mix uh, our cable belt packs with an ASL system or with a Clearcom system that you own from previously, you can do it. For example, you can you you own a Clearcom system, want to to buy some Altair belt packs? It's okay. They will work fine. Okay. Maybe there are just some small uh, talk volume differences, but they will they will work fine. So. Uh, Somebody, well, Sahil asked me to talk about inference, interferences and, and jammers and tricky situations in which wireless will not work pro, uh, um, properly. And so um, I wanted to, to, um, to explain it briefly using this uh, spectrum, okay? Just to, to let you know where our products are, okay? This blue uh, band is where our products are operating from 1.88 gigahertz to 1.93 gigahertz. And this is a really good band because it's reserved from, from speech. It's reserved for just voice communication, okay? And here, when getting to this point, I want to, to read something that our main engineer prepared for me, uh, which is really short and lets you know how uh, our system works and why we chose this work. So, the frequency chosen by Altair wireless system is proprietary for voice operating devices only. This is so the interference is very unlikely to happen in high profile events. Uh, the band that we use is composed of 10 carriers from one, from 18, sorry, from 1800 gigahertz to 1900, uh, sorry from 1.8 gigahertz from 1.9 mega gigahertz. That's where our products work, as you can see here in this example. I was just um, messing around. So uh, our system work operates in TDMA, which means that the same carry frequency can, uh, carry up to six channels or belt packs. So basically, um, what, I, what we were want to explain with this is that uh, interference is very unlikely to happen okay and also that the frequency assigned 
is uh, done automatically, which means that you, you, do not, you do not need to, to go to the base station and select which build packet is going to be occupying which specific frequency. The system does that automatically. Basically, it works like, um, like some kind of Bluetooth device. You just press one button in the base station, press another button in the build pack, and they locate each other. They, and they, let's say that the build pack is registered to the base station, and then the system uh, stays like that, and you don't have to do anything else. And again, it's the system, the one which allocates the frequencies automatically. You don't have to practice uh, anything. So uh, there is also no, no interferences with wireless microphones or with wireless in-ears or with DMX because those are different, um, different frequencies. So here is where we are in the 1.88 to 1.93 gigahertz. Okay. Anyway, just mm, do not get obsessed with these frequency things. Just uh, keep in mind that the, the band that we use is pretty clean and it's legal in India, and that's all you need to know. But talking about jammers, mm, talking about jammers, if the, the real thing is that if you are going to a high profile event in which you are going to have members from the, from the government and they are using a jammer, if the jammer they are using is targeting the frequency used by your system, you are done you will not be able to that's why if you are going to be working in this kind of events it's good to have a backup system which would be a based intercom system also and by alter okay it's good to have if you are going to be working or in church of, um, uh, of an event of these uh, characteristics it would be good that you have your wireless system but that you have also a backup which could be uh, a cable-based intercom system, or a, a walkie-talkie system, or both systems. Again, as I introduced before when we were starting with this session, um, walkie-talkie systems can be a good backup. They are not as professional or as reliable, and they do not offer all the functions, but they can be a backup just to, um, to get the thing done if you find this kind of problems, like a, like a jammer. Um, so basically, regarding interfaces and jammers, that I don't want to get any any deeper into this, um, because it's a, it's a really really wide uh, conversation. And basically, I to, you know that the frequency used by our systems is pretty clean in India, and only if you have uh, some some jammers, uh, you have a problem. But that's highly unlikely to happen, and I would say that's less than one percent of the situations. So just do not be obsessed about it. So, uh, talking about interferences, uh, well, uh, I just wrote here, before choosing your system, check your local legislation regarding communications, but I'm already telling you that uh, the frequency used by alter systems is legal in India, so no problem. Uh, this is talking about the, the band that we used. It, this is the DECT band, which is called Digitally Enhanced Cordless Telecommunications, and well, what you see here is that it's usually a cleaner band, and that's why Alter selected this band to be our home, to put it this way. There are also intercom systems which are based upon Wi-Fi uh, in 24 gigahertz, but this is, this is of worldwide use, but this band is highly saturated, and that's why I do not recommend um, Wi-Fi-based intercom system. Uh, well, uh, getting to the end of this session, uh, we go with some general recommendations. Okay, uh, first one is something that I always mention. Just know your system and most of it. I have found some examples of users who have owned Altera devices for over 10 years and were using just like 20% or 15% of their capabilities. So my recommendation is that you read the manual, that you know, that you get to know your system properly and that you make the most of it, okay? Then going to the second uh, uh, point, proper maintenance. Proper maintenance is a key, okay? If you don't want your systems to fail uh, at the worst time, you just follow and keep a proper maintenance program to, to, to have them ready for when you need them. And uh, when designing or choosing an intercom system, anticipate problems. Going back to what we were mentioning a couple seconds ago, 
uh, if you know that they're going to work in an event in which you probably could find a, a jammer or which is going to be noisy, please uh, always select the, the right model of headset for the environment in which you are going to be working. And if you anticipate that you are going to have some jammer issues, well, just deploy a secondary system, which could be a cable-based system. In mobile applications or specific events, prepare tools and or alternatives to be able to overcome any problem. This is related to, to this one. Uh, for example, if you are traveling around your country, deploying um, an event or in an itinerant music festival, and you know that sometimes you have you can find problems with coverage, well, just uh, bring with you some different models of antennas that we have in our catalog to adapt the coverage or the range of your system as, as good as possible to your needs. So basically, basically this means have tools have tools so that you can fight problems when they appear and the expert tip as i said before combine cable and wireless dev devices to make the most of your money i insist wireless devices are cool are great are really useful are and are sometimes mandatory for some specific tasks uh, or for some specific people but not for everyone giving a wireless bell pack to a person who's just standing mixing foh during over three hours doesn't make any sense just give this guy um cable belt pack and you will be saving a lot of money and also you will save uh, range issues battery issues so i insist anytime uh, that you can you just give a cable based belt pack and only reserve wireless belt packs for those professionals who really need them okay that's that's my advice and knowing that you can combine cable and wireless belt packs i i always would try to maximize the use of cable based belt packs and only give wireless belt packs to those who really need them and final tip i have already anticipated this but i will uh, remind you it again always to choose the right model of headset okay uh, our belt packs no matter if they are wireless or cable based accept several models of, of headsets from in ER almost invisible really discrete models to this classic big intercom headset which isolates you really well from from the, the noise of the environment so if you are going to work in a noisy environment choose the model of headset which is going to be more isolating okay so uh, again this recommendation choose wisely your headsets because they can improve notably uh, your user experience Okay, so um, talking about uh, this point, know your intercom system and make the most of it. Uh, this, is, um, this also applies to the accessories. For example, here I have drawn a basic example of how, how to uh, place incorrectly an antenna. If you buy, for example, this antenna, which is in our catalog, and which you can see its uh, action area in green, let's say that this antenna covers the area in green and it's prepared to work in the same level in which the operators are working. So this is how it works and this would be the right use of this antenna that you hear in the bottom, that you see here in the bottom, but I have seen people installing this on the ceiling and here it, does, it doesn't do anything. So again, know your system, know your accessories, read the manuals and uh, basically be a pro be a pro know them know them for good and be a proper technician and use them properly okay that's that might sound basic but uh, I, um, I would I would also recommend this if we were just be talking about audio but you see here these three mesh cables well with the intercom installation when it's cable based it's the same, so uh, usually it's not that complicated because it's just a couple cables, uh, a couple lines, a couple communication channels. It's never going to be this messy, but uh, always cleaner the better. Okay, so um, um, the more time you take to um, to install things properly, the more time you take to to get your stage clear, it's going to be the better for you. And this also applies to intercom systems. Okay, and that's all folks are going to uh, accept some questions and I will try to give you proper answers uh, I hope this this hasn't been too long I, I was speeding a little bit 
but you know I wanted to cover a lot of issues and I know it's um, it's difficult for you I just couldn't uh, do it shorter uh, probably you have your brains on fire right now but uh, no problems I will try to to solve any any question that you have Fran first and foremost I would like to thank you for that really insightful and session and he said that you know mm -hmm. a lot of questions are popping up uh, within our family our extended family and um, one of the finest light designers in India who's a very regular user of products has a question uh, Lloyd says uh -huh, okay Lloyd says looking forward to a night uh, looking forward to a noise cancellation model preferably wireless active or passive noise cancellation and yes share some insight would be delighted to hear that Fran. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, uh, this is actually a really interesting question because noise cancelling headsets, uh, they have been in the market uh, for already a couple of years and they are attracting a lot of interests um, in, from the professional users. So we are currently working with this brand, Bose, you probably know uh, this uh, really high-end uh, brand of speakers and headsets, which is called Bose Americans. And we are um, about to start a, a venture with them. We are about to start a collaboration with them so that they will, um, let's say that under um, noise cancelling uh, headsets will be working together. We have already run a couple of tests in the lab, Bose headsets connected to our systems and they work great because they have this active noise cancelling device which makes you it's like almost like being in the space suddenly you have a, a terrible noise outside the headsets you place them you activate the noise cancelling and it's like being in a you know in the space not hearing anything so i'm sure that he he could enjoy this technology when we have it ready uh, please just ask sahil about this and he will give you more information as i will give it to him thank you fran and you know i'll request our entire extended family who's attending uh, the mss webinar along with altair audio systems uh, uh, if you have any questions ladies and gentlemen please type in your questions in the chat box so i can read out your questions to fran and uh, we can share more knowledge we can gather more insight from fran who's an expert and in the meanwhile, uh, I would like to uh, speak to Jindi, sir, sir Harjinder Jindi. Uh, his experience in the events business is probably more than my age. And he has seen the transformation, the transition of the way the industry in India has used uh, uh, intercom systems. So uh, I'll request Jindi, sir, if you can please come on screen and yes, and uh, I will take some technical help from the man who has been helping India. Technically, we have Sahil with us right here. Yes. Arjinda sir will request you to please uh, uh, come on screen. If you can. Yes. Jindi sir, Satsri Kaal. <laughs> and I'm going to unmute Jindi sir. Sir, you've seen that. Yeah, now I'm going to unmute. Yes, uh, Jindi sir, can you hear us loud and clear? Yeah, we can. We can. Yes, sir. So you've seen this transition of uh, the use of this equipment of intercom systems. Yes. So when you started, you were a pioneer of the industry. So when you started, so how do you see the way we have moved forward and the, the technology that we are using today, sir? We've got the journey. It started in 96. You see, it's been almost uh, 24 years now. And and uh, yes, we were using talkies earlier. Then came the earpiece, and uh, finally, from the earpiece, we moved on to clear comms and uh, other stuff. We've been using phones also quite regularly. But the technologies have been coming in, and uh, they will be improving. And that's uh, innovation which keeps in.
Can you hear me? Yes, sir. It was nice to see so many visitors over here. And uh, we, are, we are still waiting for people to type in questions. If you have any questions, uh, gentlemen, uh, there is, please feel free to ask Fran. He has been extremely kind to spend some time to uh, share his insight and knowledge with all of us. The way we look forward for uh, the way we look forward to better shows, better quality in terms of uh, yes, show running and the technical aspect. If you have any questions, please type in your question in the in the chat box. Yes, sir. So we have a question from uh, Mandeep. Mandeep Singh uh, is asking. Uh, at uh, Fran mentioned two hands are usable when using the intercom systems. So does it also work on auto audio detection or on always on mode? Fran. Yeah, that's a good question also. Um, of course, yeah. Um, he's right. Uh, we have no auto, auto audio detection. Uh, our systems uh, do not work that way. Basically, it's true that in order to activate the microphone, whenever, whenever you want to talk, um, you need to manually go to the bell pack, reach the bell pack, and activate the microphone in order to speak. But um, the, the, how, how you use an intercom system, usually uh, the, the, the process is you are working and you are listening to the communication channel. So usually you are working with your, with, with your hands and you are just listening, okay? So actually that's not mm, preventing you from using your both hands. And only when you need to say something, that's the only moment in which one of your hands will not be available. Since you will have to go to your belt packs, to your, to your belt pack, press a button and that, or then the, the, the microphone key will be active and now you can go back to using your both hands. You can always uh, leave the microphone on and in this case, uh, you would be hands-free forever. But that's not recommended, for example, in very noisy environments because the, the noise of the, of the ambience will be getting through your microphone and would be shared into the communication line, making the communication line a little bit noisier. And if all the users do that, in the end, the communication line will be um, saturated. So yes, he's right. It, it's not a hands-free forever. It's hands-free um, as long as you are just listening. But when you have to activate the microphone, you have to manually reach the bell pack and press the on and off button. So it's a good question. I wish that in the future we have uh, some sort of um, auto audio detection, as he explained. But uh, by now we we, don't, we do not feature that. Actually, that would be possible by creating some sort of um, noise gate or something like that. And I know that there are devices for for stage microphones which feature that function. So maybe in the future we will include it. Uh, one never knows. Uh, thank you, Fran. And another question that you know, that I just popped up is that how many devices can be connect with the wireless, and how many uh, can be connected with the wired one? Okay, so uh, I will start with the cable based. Uh, uh, using just one single cable based station, you can have let's say up to sixty users. Okay, the problem is basically the power that the power supply in the unit um, can provide. So if you use good quality cables and shorter cable distances, shorter cable lengths, then the, the users can be even more than 60. But if you are work, going to use really long cables uh, of let's say up to 200, 200 meters, 300 meters, uh, in this case, uh, because there's a, a big loss of power through the cable, you will not be able to wear more than say uh, 20 or 30. I, I'm just guessing here, but anytime you have this sort of doubt, this kind of doubts, you can drop us a line just with a simple drawing of the distances and the number of users that you want to, 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 
to connect to the system and we will tell you if it's possible or not. But to make it simple, uh, let's say that our system can run over 50 users in cable, in cable. And the wireless system, we have two options. The, let's say, simplest station can work with up to four wireless users and the bigger station can work with up to eight wireless users. That would be the, the, the simple. Four, up to four or up to eight. And then if you need more than, more than eight, we can, link, we can link several wireless stations and by doing that, we can get a um, network, uh, to, to call it that way, of up to 24 wireless users. But basically, to make it simple, four or eight. That simplifies uh, a lot of things for us. Uh, Fran, once again, you know, India's yeah. favorite light designer, Lloyd, is asking a question which actually concerns my interest to a very, very strong extent. And he's asked, Lloyd says, uh, he asked that, you know, considering the global scenario as of now with COVID, how does Voltaire look at communication on online shows and virtual events? So that communication can happen between lights and sound and the show director who are local around the world working on the same show mm -hmm. well uh, this is actually a really good question uh, as you said basically this thing with the virus i um, i believe it, it caught us all a surprise uh, no no one was ready for this and we are trying to to adapt to it uh, as fast as possible um, basically what we have been focusing on is to provide uh, methods of cleaning and protecting our devices and sanitizing our devices so that their use is uh, safer and better. And actually, intercom systems are a great tool to prevent uh, contagion because if I can talk to you via my intercom system and you are, let's say, 200 away and we don't have to be um, in, in, in proximity, of course, by using the intercom systems, we can fight the virus. But uh, talking about remote production, which is what he's talking about, um, honestly, we haven't done anything related to that. And we have had some conversations thinking about how we could enter that world, how we could enter the world of remote production. But uh, until we have our new IP-based system, which is actually being developed right now, and it will be called the IPCOM. And until we have that, we will not be able to provide any solutions for remote production. When we have that, uh, we can provide solutions for remote production since you can be working from your house if you want. You just have an IP-based station and you can be doing remote production with this sort of devices. But with the devices that we have currently in our catalog, we cannot offer alternatives for, for remote production. We're working on that, but right now it's not possible. And you know, this question also reminds me that, you know, all of us in one way or the other fan are experimenting with our own limitlessness in terms of technology and the way we use this platform, the way we think, the way we work together. We hope that, you know, this problem of COVID ends soon and we get back to the mm -hmm. normal, get back to the awesomeness that we spread. And uh, since we don't have any more questions uh, in the chat box, I would like to welcome on screen once again, uh, our director of Modern State Service, the torch bearer in India for Altair. And uh, let's see what he has to say as his uh, closing remarks. Hi guys, thank you for watching uh, uh, the presentation and Fran, thank you so much for uh, this great presentation. I hope you guys uh, uh, enjoyed it and you know got to learn something from it. Uh, if you have any more questions regarding the sets, the prices, um, re regarding more information uh, on the wired and wireless systems, I'll uh, uh, post my details in the chat box and you guys can get in touch with me anytime. Uh, or you can just log on to our website www.modernstateservice.in and you can find most of the information there. Still, if you have any questions, I'm, I'm there to uh, answer all of those. And uh, uh, thank you so much for your time, guys. And we'll be, uh, with Fran, uh, we'll be probably hosting up uh, one more webinar, which will more be, uh, which will be more detailed on the connections of the wired and wireless systems. So thank you, Fran, and thank you guys for this uh, amazing webinar. 
and i hope you guys uh, you know uh, learn something out of it thank you so much guys thank you so much no problem i just wanted to say one final thing uh, sahil if that's not a problem yeah. um uh, this as i said before was a very introductory webinar but i insist if somebody wants um, his particular situation to be studied or to be treated uh, you can always count on my my help to to design the best solution for you to look for what's uh, good for your application so please if you have any any need just let us know and we will try to to find the best solution for your needs okay great thank you fran thank you so much thank you so much guys thanks to all of you for your watching and see you soon see you thank you